So a natural quietness comes over the crowd. Uh, so it must be time to start. Um, so uh, I'm Mike Wigler. I'm from the University of Pennsylvania. Thank you for having us here today. Um, and tomorrow, we're really excited about this opportunity uh, to uh, come and meet with uh, our, our UK colleagues uh, around uh, this, this set of software. Um, I do recognize that Owen and I are between you and being out there and getting some food and drink. Uh, I'm going to try and move really, really quickly. Uh, the meat of our presentation, the meat we'll throw on the table, is uh, Owen is going to attempt to do uh, some live software uh, demonstrations. So we really want to get to that as quickly as possible. Uh, I also wanted to just uh, give a shout out to uh, JISC. Uh, they have sponsored this uh, session uh, specifically um, uh, and have underwritten the work uh, that uh, is part of the GoKB project uh, and KB Plus as well, so we really thank them for that. This thing on. Hmm. Okay. Uh, there. Uh, just a quick overview. Uh, uh, so I'm going to take the first two parts here, uh, talk a little bit about uh, GoKB, what it is. Uh, and the status of the project, uh, and, and then a little bit about how we imagine GoKB will interact with uh, Kuali Ole. Uh, it's one of those interfaces that we talked about earlier uh, that we'll be exposing about how to interact with knowledge bases in general. Uh, then I'll turn it over to Owen, who will talk about the KB Plus project uh, and, uh, talk a word, and, and say a word about uh, how it's also going to uh, interact with uh, GoKB. And then we'll take a look at it. Uh, we'll take a look at some of the software that we've been developing uh, so that you can see that it, it really is coming together and, uh, and there's some there there. Uh, and then finally, a word about uh, next steps in the project uh, since we are an ongoing concern. All right. So what is GoKB? Um, as it says here, it's a, it's a freely available community managed system. Uh, it's a knowledge base. It is meant to capture information necessary to manage subscription uh, uh, content that libraries are subscribing to uh, as part of their collections. Um, it also is about the supply chain. It's about libraries reminding the supply chain that we're part of it, we're not the end of it, uh, that we in fact are, are uh, 
influencing what uh, is being offered uh, through the scholarship and research that faculty are doing on campus, uh, what is being purchased by trying to influence what's in the bundles uh, and packages that we're buying um, as well. So there's real benefit uh, in looking at this as an ecosystem uh, where there are feedback loops that really inform all the players here. And you can think of the players as the publishers, the providers, and the libraries, and then that the end consumers are out there being serviced in some way. Um, so we are this project that's trying to develop soft software that builds a knowledge base and allows the community to support it, uh, to enhance it, and to really improve the timeliness and accuracy of that data. Uh, and we have some uh, ideas about how that could be done and how the community can participate directly in that rather than your options right now really are to alert a provider that there is some inconsistency or incorrect data uh, in a knowledge service, uh, knowledge based service and then wait for it hopefully to be rectified. And then uh, the next time there's an update you want to make sure that it's not been replicated, that the error hasn't been reintroduced. So this is an opportunity for librarians to be directly uh, participating in the work uh, that's going on around the accuracy. So it is a software project, but it also is a, a community. It's a, it's a community of practice and development. Um, this is the GoKD Partners, which uh, in large part is the Qualio Lay Partnership, uh, but also uh, just is involved. Um, we have uh, funding from the Andrew W. Mellon Project as well, uh, so we thank them for that. Uh, also, and, and within this project, we're using our subject matter experts, uh, the librarians who really know what's going on with uh, knowledge bases, who understand the problems uh, that they're uh, encountering, and understand how it's used once it gets into the library, how they use it for the selection purposes, for acquisitions, uh, for the life cycle of the uh, subscribed material, uh, including troubleshooting, and then, in fact, even assessment and feedback. Uh, to the community. So they, they get it. They know what the problems are. They know the work that they have to do. They, 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 they know the, the little special tricks that they've had to apply over time in order to get this data to work correctly. Um, so really bringing them into this process has been critical to help, help us understand as we develop the software, as we specify this architecture, as we have this idea that they would like to be involved and in fact are incentivized to be involved in, in the accuracy of this data. We have a sense of what it is that it would take to do that. So we're a software project, we're a community, but we're also a project. Uh, and as projects do, they should have a beginning and, and something of an end at least, uh, maybe a soft ending. Um, and this is uh, the timeline for our project. Uh, so GoKB um, was not even a, a project yet. Uh, uh, represented by Kristen Anthelman from North Carolina State University uh, and myself. We were over here um, talking about Kowali Olay uh, and we started running into the KB Plus project uh, and hearing more about it and got thinking about the implications for Kowali Olay of how we're going to interact with knowledge bases. So we started working with uh, uh, folks who are, are important in the KB Plus project uh, around the data model so that we could develop a coordinated data model. We really didn't want to have some different idea about what knowledge base uh, data might look like. Uh, there was lots of advantages in trying to get this right once because it requires us to interact with providers and publishers of this data. Uh, so rather than all of us running to them and saying, hey, we have an idea, but we want it to be slightly different than those other people, um, we thought that it would be better to collaborate on this. So we worked uh, ahead of our project, ahead of our funding uh, from Mellon on uh, really pinning down that data model and thinking uh, uh, how, how it should be represented uh, for this kind of data. So then uh, about midway through uh, 2012, we got uh, two years worth of funding from the Mellon Foundation uh, to underwrite the development and uh, project work that's going on now that comprises the GoKB project. And I should have stopped the slide back. Uh, GoKB equals global open knowledge base, uh, which is uh, sort of important when you think about where it sits in the ecosystem. Uh, so we've, uh, we've already passed a couple of milestones here. We got our funding. Uh, we've done a proof of concept uh, around the idea uh, of GoKD and its uh, supportability uh, in the community, its ability to um, ingest data from providers uh, and uh, publishers and make sense of that. 
Um, we are now working towards our phase two partner release. This will be working software, uh, and in fact, parts of that already are up uh, that uh, Owen will be uh, showing you in a little bit. Um, our funding, as I said, is a two-year project, so by the uh, middle of 2014, uh, next year, uh, the funding should be spent out. Uh, we'll be going into pub public release that at that point. Now, as a global open knowledge base, there's a couple of things that's implied there, uh, and that's that uh, it is globally available and freely available uh, to people who want to consume data out of it. Uh, its openness ensures that uh, it can be understood and accessed, uh, and then it is a knowledge base for this kind of material. So there is a life cycle to, to this. Uh, uh, subscribe uh, electronic material, um, and I alluded to it earlier, there's uh, this select uh, process where you're looking at trials or, or what's in packages, you're trying to make an assessment of does this meet uh, the needs of my users, uh, is this the kind of material that I want to acquire? What's the overhead of bringing this in? Uh, there's a, once you make those decisions to either license or buy, uh, there's negotiating the contract with the vendor, there's uh, understanding uh, the ongoing relationship that you're forming there. There's managing uh, the uh, relationship and the resource as you go forward. And a big part of that is managing the change uh, these things are not static, you don't buy them and they don't just stay the same. Um, and what is sometimes surprising is that it's not really clear what's in uh, a package, a bundle of uh, subscribed resource um, uh, or electronic journals. So really figuring that out uh, is, is a big piece of what engages our librarians who are involved in this kind of work. The other kind is, is that there are always, as you can imagine, access problems. Um, or ability to use the resource in some particular way, so some troubleshooting goes on in this management uh, stage as well. And then finally, assess, assessment, uh, really understanding whether it is meeting the needs of our users, uh, that it's being used in, in ways that um, uh, show a return on the investment uh, that you're trying to uh, uh, capture, and that it just keeps going around and around that way. So. At each point in this life cycle, you can see how the knowledge base may support um, these practices uh, in, in the selection stage, really being able to understand what's in the bundle, uh, in the licensing stage, uh, being able to interact with model licenses or, or uh, see what um, uh, options you have for the kind of content that may be available through the package. During management, being able to understand who you contact, when you contact them, uh, the terms of usage uh, that are available to you. And then finally, in assessment, being able to understand usage, uh, both from the kinds of statistics that uh, providers are providing or local statistics that you may be generating yourself. And who's using this data in our imagination? So as it comes online, uh, we actually uh, foresee a relatively rich ecosystem of users. and. And in many cases, they are users and providers in some ways, not always, but uh, many of these workflows can be bi-directional. So publishers certainly are providing uh, information uh, about uh, material that is available uh, through packages, uh, national uh, knowledge bases are trying to build um, shared services across um, higher institu uh, education institutions uh, to get some economies of scale. And on around this wheel, um, there are many who are providing information in uh, and, and then consuming the, the data that's, that's in there. The real attempt here, though, is to capture not static data, data but very dynamic set of data uh, to enrich it uh, as it goes through the life cycle uh, to keep it accurate and timely. And to do that, there's a lot of players that are involved. Uh, in terms of a lot of players being involved, the GoKB project has gotten uh, a lot of attention, particularly from uh, national uh, knowledge base efforts that are going on. Uh, we are looking at uh, cooperation at least around the data model, uh, that, that somehow this data model represents the critical data that uh, should be captured about these kinds of resources. And uh, we've had uh, fairly in-depth conversations and meetings with uh, a variety of, of uh, national players that in, uh, come from the UK, uh, France, Germany, uh, Canada, the US, uh, and other places as well. The question mark is, we 
hope that it keeps uh, growing in that direction. Uh, there's lots of value in this kind of coordination. This is you can think of this as there's not a competitive advantage to having a different data model to describe electronic resources. This is really lubricant, and if we all subscribe to the same kind of lubrication, that um, it provides better uh, mobility of the data and consistency of the data as well. And I refer to an ecosystem. This is sort of how we're seeing it, this inverted triangle of moving from the global context down through uh, some large uh, uh, umbrella type organization that may be a, a national knowledge base or shared services or a consortium uh, or some kind of a national library system um, organization, and then down to the local library and how it may uh, implement it. And, and at every one of these levels, there is a bi-directional conversation with third-party uh, uh, providers of information. Uh, we want to be able to consume data and then correct that data, uh, improve its uh, uh, accuracy and enhance it in ways, and then get that back into the supply chain uh, as well. And, and you can see some of the uh, activities that are supported uh, through this ecosystem. And in terms of Kowali Olay and how we're thinking about using it, uh, the first thing that I really want to say is that um, this is the knowledge base for Kowali Olay. Uh, in our concept, when our thinking uh, started thinking, uh, going into how we were going to interact with knowledge bases, uh, we thought that this would really be the best way to go. Uh, uh, Kowali Olay is a community uh, sourced software. We are deeply involved in how that piece of software is evolving and being uh, described functionally and even technically. Um, and we wanted to think about GoKB in the same kind of way, that it was something that our librarians wanted to be involved in, that they wanted to influence in very direct ways. So when, when we thought about it uh, in those terms, it was pretty obvious to us that um, we should be able to consume data from other knowledge bases, uh, but that GoKB really could support uh, the needs that we have uh, for knowledge base in, in Kuala Olay. Uh, the other thing to say here is that, uh, so uh, to express that commitment, uh, the OLA partnership uh, librarians are definitely involved in and committed to uh, being editors for uh, the content that's coming through GoKB. So we're not just passive consumers um, and, and complainers. There's a, a bit of responsibility here. There's, there, we're stepping up and saying that this data is critical to us and it's so critical to us that we're willing to put this kind of work into it. So a lot of uh, primary um, uh, editors that we foresee in the system going forward will come out of the Kuali Olay partnership. In fact, we feel that relationship strong enough to think that uh, as Kuali Olay completes its um, development, is that that conversation will be bi-directional as well. That Olay won't just be, again, a passive consumer of the data that's coming out of the knowledge base, but that as you make changes in Olay, you would be able to mark those changes as uh, ones that should be promoted up to the global level where they can be vetted uh, by the community and either they are true or not true, but it's a way of influencing uh, what we understand about uh, truthiness, let's say. Uh, the workflow is still being worked on. This is a very active part of uh, the functional uh, discussions that are going on in Kuali Olay now. We'll go a little bit into the Kuali Olay roadmap tomorrow uh, in the Olay overview session. Um, uh, we are just about to release uh, uh, version one of the software, uh, and then uh, 1.5 is slated for uh, the early part of the year, February, March of next year. Uh, within that 1.5 uh, release will be the beginnings of this workflow getting turned into code and then uh, with the 2.0 release at the end of the year, that's where it will come into uh, full bloom. Um, what you see over on the left though in that sort of mustard color uh, is where GoKB is. Um, the packages are being consumed and then enhanced by the community uh, for accuracy and, um, and timeliness. Uh, and stored in the GoKB knowledge base. Um, it's being exposed to the community through a set of uh, APIs that uh, Olay will use, as well as uh, KB Plus to consume the data, to request information out of the system, uh, and in fact, in turn, to feed data back into the system. But certainly the request process will pull out records, uh, create records uh, 
uh, within the OLA system, documents as we call them, uh, that describe the, ma the material being um, uh, purchased, um, the component parts of the bundle, uh, and bring it into the system, even creating item records and requisitions uh, as necessary to indicate uh, uh, the management of the resource. Then it plugs right into this uh, life cycle that we talked about earlier. Uh, and there's two primary places that it's going to plug into. One is during the selection process, for sure, of really understanding what is being offered um, and what options you have for pushing what's being op uh, offered around. And then down at the management stage, being able to interact with uh, the knowledge base is important in supporting uh, that ongoing maintenance uh, and uh, uh, improvement and enhancement of the knowledge base as well. When problems are found, they can go back out of uh, Olay, back into um, a process within GoKB to edit uh, the resource and then update the knowledge base uh, in general. And then over here on the right, uh, using our discovery process that we just uh, uh, heard from Chicago and, and Senate House and in Indiana um, to feed this data out to our users. And then finally, I uh, just want to talk a little bit about uh, synchronization. So um, I'm on the, uh, so I'm the director of IT at the University of Pennsylvania. So that's one hat I'm wearing, and there I'm worried about implementing software that's useful for the University of Pennsylvania context. Uh, I'm a former uh, chair of the Functional Council for Kuali Olay, and now a special advisor to the Functional Council on Technology uh, for Olay. Uh, so really interested there in how the OLA ecosystem is developing and how we're looking at these strategic relationships uh, of OLA being in the ecosystem of uh, higher education academic libraries. And I'm on the steering committee for GoKB. So what I find is that synchronizing these roadmaps is really a fine art. It's about getting proposals in um, on certain deadlines, getting funding, um, uh, being able to deliver functionality that uh, is useful or just in time to function or data that's being provided uh, from other services. Um, and what we what we try to do here is a little bit of staggering uh, across this timeline, so that uh, as we go through our release schedule in Kuali Olay, that GoKB is a little bit ahead of us uh, in each one of those, so that we can take a look at it, understand what it's providing, and how to integrate it into Olay. And then at the end of 2014, what we're really hoping is that we come into full synchronization at that point, uh, and that from then on, we are, we are in some kind of pr uh, full production mode of enhancing the data. And with that, Owen, I'm going to turn it over to you. Great. OK, this is where I take my life in my hands and see whether I can spot the displays over. Um, see. Do oh, there you go. That looks good. Hey. Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, yes. Now I really am standing between you and uh, and drinks. Um. So um. So I'm not used to speaking this late in the day. I'm not sure I've got the energy. Never mind you guys. But um, what the um, the KB Plus project? I just want to give. A little bit of background to um, to the KB Plus project before uh, looking at how that integrates with GoKB, and then showing you some of the GoKB work that we've done. So um, the um, the KB Plus project started uh, really back in around 2009. There was a project um, from Sconnell looking at shared services, and it recommended a focus on. Um, electronic resource management and how shared services in the UK could uh, contribute to, to helping institutions with that uh, kind of problem area. And um, it then developed over um, uh, the next couple of years uh, with some work with um, some 
a number of universities, about 16 universities, engaged with some detailed case studies around workflows and processes and problems that were um, around the kind of workflows uh, in electronic resource management. And one of the things that came out strongly from that was the, um, the need for high quality uh, information about how electronic resources were being sold, um, kind of how they were put together, and how there, there was an opportunity to reduce duplication of effort across the UK, where lots of, all the universities were essentially trying to get the same information out to publishers, about out content providers, out uh, e-journal aggregator services, and do the same thing. So um, KB Plus was um, was envisaged as a uh, uh, shared open knowledge base for UKAT to minimise that duplication of effort, and um, the it, it was felt that it needed to go not just be a, another knowledge base, but to go a bit further than that. So to incorporate aspects of local holdings, local institutional information, licensed data, as well as kind of just a list of what's in the package. And um, as a, it was envisaged as a shared service from day one. So I think that was baked in. And the um, and also as an open data service uh, from day one. So all of the data that's uh, kind of above the institutional level. Uh, so all the data that's about describing packages, what's in journal packages, how are they being sold, how they're being grouped together, uh, what platforms are they available on, where's the URLs, where this, the data is available. All of that data is available under a CC0. Um, that is essentially a public domain declaration, and uh, so can be reabsorbed into the the um, the ecosystem of data around here. So, so we want that data to be used and used again. And you know, our ideal is that it should get back into the supply chain, kind of from the publisher end. Because from our point of view, certainly from a KB Plus perspective, we think we've improved the uh, description, the descriptive data there, and we'd like to kind of get a virtuous circle going there. And certainly, we also want it to flow down into. Um, into vendor knowledge bases, so the knowledge bases that drive products like Serial Solutions 360 or SFX uh, or uh, the EBSCO Link Resolver or all those uh, knowledge bases that are out there, we would like that data to be flowing into those. And indeed, um, in, in the, the last month or so, we've started to see that happen with packages that we're describing in KB+, that data being taken and uh, displayed within uh, Serial Solutions and SFX uh, Link Resolvers. Um, so, so that is happening, and we're working to, to make that across the major link resolver uh, and knowledge base products that, that are being used in the UK. Um, and obviously, the, the focus, the, the UK focus there, and it, the, the project is run by GISC Collections or GISC, um, uh, GISC Collections as part of GISC. And, um, and the UK focus there, obviously. Just collections were involved in negotiating a lot of the UK specific deals there, so we had a head start in terms of what's in the package uh, and how's that described. Um, but um, obviously there were some packages uh, like JSTOR, which are, are not just UK specific. You know, the JSTOR Arts and Sciences one is not different in the UK to how it is in the US or in Japan or Germany or, or um, wherever. Um, and so what we wanted to do was to start looking at um, we wanted to describe things that were happening at the international level as well as the national level. We didn't want it to just be inward looking. And of course, that's where we start to see the overlap with um, GoKB, which I'll talk about a bit more in a moment. Um, the, um, the other thing is that we have envisaged it uh, as uh, with having communication and collaboration tools built in from the very beginning. So there are um, uh, communication and collaboration tools built into the product. So discussion forum supported around each package, uh, uh, triggers that uh, will update by email or by RSS or by uh, uh, web interface when there are changes to packages, when there are changes to this data. And of course, all of this experience that um, we have under KB Plus, we hope we can share or we are sharing with the GoKB project as we work on that as well. And I work on both projects and contribute to both projects. Uh, uh, as do the, the core development team behind both projects, which is Knowledge Integration, uh, uh, who are here today. Um, they're, they're doing the development on both projects. So we have a lot of synchronicity and shared understanding and information there. So as one project learns, the other one does as well. Um, mm, that's not good. Uh, 
Um, so this is a this is simplified um, uh, representation of the data model in in KV plus. And the 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 reason I put this up really is not so you can admire you know our clever data modeling, although it did take a lot of effort to to think through these issues and um, and then and we have tried to um, we've incorporated both what we've done and what we've learned from what we've done as we've worked on GoKB. But um, you can see there's um, the, the stuff uh, in the kind of light greenish color is all stuff that we believe kind of happens at a, uh, a global level or at least above the institutional level. And uh, things like uh, the titles of journals, which is represented by a box at the top called title instance there, um, and the packages, how they're sold, and some of, some aspects of licensing, there are certainly licenses that are expressed as kind of uh, a gen generic or template licenses that we can we can have a shared understanding of. And so all of that stuff at the top is is stuff that we would see as kind of globally true, or at least not just true for you, uh, for a single institution. And all this stuff in the mustard color uh, at the bottom is stuff that um, is more about uh, local institution kind of how you arrange your subscriptions, how that stuff is grouped in terms of how you pay for it, how the exact local license under which you hold it, and the exact uh, access you have, local holdings, what we um, in KV Plus call the issue entitlement, that local holdings information uh, at, at the bottom there. And um, at the moment what happens is a team at GIST Collections, a team of data managers, um, populate information in the top half of this diagram, so that kind of uh, description about how the world is, hopefully, um, and institutions then can use uh, the, the data elements in the bottom half to um, show to, to record their local institutional holdings and uh, access. And um, obviously, when we talk about KB Plus and GoKB, there's a question about how do those interact. Well, essentially, um, we can say that, that the stuff below the line is definitely still uh, a knowledge base plus kind of problem. That is. It's not something that, that is global. Um, it's not part of the global open knowledge base. The question about what institutions have, what they're subscribing to, is an institutional matter generally. There may be some scope for sharing aspects of that data, but it's uh, certainly like a lot of the time you can't share, for instance, your license terms with other people. It's not kind of global open data. The stuff above the line is often either at a, at a global or a national level in the way that, that Mike uh, showed on his uh, one of his slides that um, there might be national deals or consortial deals that uh, that describe how things are so the science direct freedom collection uh, as negotiated within the UK is different to the the information that you can just download from the science direct website so there is a difference there but we can record that and it's true for quite a lot of institutions and of course then you have the examples like JSTOR uh, Project Muse, you know, loads of collections where there's kind of just a global truth. You know, it's sold one way and it's sold to everybody, um, and those things change over time. So where we would see uh, at the moment, the GIST Collections team are entering data into KB Plus and recording that locally. What we see is the uh, as happening once we get the integration piece done um, in uh, it, it, next year is that. Um, that those same staff can enter that information directly into GoKB, so that's described at the global level, and then KB Plus will be one of the systems consuming that data. So just as Qualio Lay will be a consumer of that data, so will KB Plus. And again, the idea of that uh, being able to feed back on that as well. So where we have in the community zone in um, the, the community area in uh, KB Plus, people saying, no, that's wrong, you know, well, we, we get access to this title under this package and you haven't included it. We can feed that back up as well. So um, we, we see certainly that um, there's still the role for KB Plus and the KB Plus data model will probably stay the same. We won't be kind of chopping off half the data, but what we'll do is start to synchronize between the two systems so that we, we take copies from GoKB uh, and that's where we do our kind of primary data management for those packages. Um, and so, um, what I will, you know, now now I get to the really daring part, which is where I uh, try to show you the the system uh, live. So. You just 
get it to mirror this properly. Okay. So um, this is the this is the first screen that you see when you log into um, KB Plus. Uh, sorry, GoKB. Um, and uh, so this is GoKB. I'm showing you. I'm not going to show you KB Plus today. That's a, that's another sales pitch. And this is uh, this is uh, GoKB. And one of the things to note is the first thing I see when I log on is a load of information, especially on the left hand side here. We can see um, data about um, kind of uh, information about data review requests. The GoKB is, is a really data-driven system. It's not a user-facing system. It's for librarians uh, and mainly, and, um, and so that's the, the target, the, the major target, obviously, and other people in the supply chain. Um, but, um, and that, those uh, review requests are about trying to improve the data, looking at things that uh, issues in the data that triggered a review request, such as a new publisher has been added to this title. Is that something that, that might need checking uh, and ratifying before we say, yes, you know, actually the publisher has changed on this title, or we've added some publisher history to this title. So this is, um, this is the first page, but um, what I want to... Um, <coughs> Try and show you if I can. Let me just uh, the Danger of a live uh, demo. Uh, we seem to have lost, or I've lost on my uh, laptop uh, a menu I'm expected to see there, but it doesn't matter. Um, usually uh, at the top here we would have a search menu, which seems to have been lost on the display for a moment. Um, but um, and you can search essentially any of the, the type, kind of main entities that we have in the system. So that's uh, titles, that's packages, that's platforms, that's organisations, uh, users as well. And um, and so all of those are uh, are accessible via a search field, but you can also browse through the system. And because the search is uh, missing for some reason right at the moment, um, I'll I'll go through the browse options instead. So um, here's a title record. So I have a title um, for science, and you can see there's huge amounts of data. And as I say, this is a very data-driven system uh, uh, available. And so we can record uh, things like it's an, it's an open access title, um, whether it's got a print imprint we know about, um, the publishers um, for the, for the um, publisher history for the title. Uh, this is a test system. This isn't real. Wiley Blackwell have not taken over publishing the science uh, from AAAS, uh, just, just in case you were worried about that. Um, but you can see that that, 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 that publisher has uh, dates attached to it. And um, we can also see uh, what the availability of that is. And uh, we can see that this isn't a package. We won't worry too much about the package name. This is test data, but a package from AAAS. Um, it's on a, a, the Science Mag platform. You can see the start and end dates for any coverage. Um, we don't have any end dates here, which means it goes kind of into the future. And, um, but we can also see that this, this has been retired. It's no longer available. So actually, um, there's no kind of current access to science at the moment, according to this system. You can see we have different um, different uh, tabs here. We can click on for other information, um, and um, one of those is review tasks. So if there are any review tasks associated with the title, so things that need looking at in the data, um, then I would see that there were a certain number of re review tasks to look at, and I might want to clean up um, aspects of that record. Um, if I click through, um, for instance, on a, a publisher name. I can see the organization display. And so um, for an organization, similarly, we have, um, we have the same kind of layout. So we've adopted kind of a, as far as we can, a consistent layout. And you can see that, um, again, there's kind of a large amount of types of information that we can have here. Um, 
whether that's uh, the roles that um, this organization plays at the moment. And so these are um, controlled roles that we, we've kind of defined and they have to be assigned. So you can't just have any organization, you can't just be a vendor, you have to decide to assign that. And organizations is one of those areas in the system where we've tried to uh, exert quite a lot of um, authority control. We don't want uh, endless variations on, um, on kind of names of organizations as the major entity. What we do want is to record those as alternate names where, where we know them. So alternate names for organizations um, as we as we build it out. And a lot of that uh, initial organizational data has come from existing uh, projects, especially the N NCSU uh, database, which they built for their eMatrix uh, electronic resource management product. So reusing that uh, information that's already in, in the uh, uh, community. Um, so from here, I can also see lists of things associated with this publisher. And you can see that um, that includes a list of the titles. Um, associated with the publisher, if I had different offices, uh, licenses associated with the publisher, uh, I'd be able to see those here as well, and packages that are associated with that publisher, so I can see the, the details of a package as well. Um, if I just go to a package screen, so this is a, this is a list of, this is a package, the AAAS package, and so um, from here I can see, you can see the kind of information that's available, um, we've, we've kind of defined a load of data elements about packages, so things like um, whether it can be broken out into individual titles, for instance, in terms of subscription, consistent, whether everybody gets the same uh, titles if they, and coverage if they subscribe to the collection or not. Um, and we can uh, go from here to the list of titles in the package. And we have this entity that we call TIPS. Um, this is uh, something that came out of the KB Plus project. So uh, I guess myself and uh, David Kay from Sarah, who's in the audience here today, take the blame for this. Uh, a TIP is a manifestation of a title within a package on a specific platform. So it's trying to kind of uh, distill a set of relationships down to ex that expression of the availability of the title within a package on a specific platform. So those are the three things that kind of we found were, were the key aspects of that provision. And so you can see here that, the, um, that the, uh, the, this, um, this package has three ti uh, four titles in it, although some of them have been retired, so four tips. If I show the details of that, I can see um, that, the, um, <coughs> that the tip details here, I can see the coverage, the start and end dates, any coverage notes, and some of those properties are taken from the KBART terminology. As Mike mentioned, we have tried to use the KBART terminology um, where we can, but um, uh, we found we had to go beyond KBART quite rapidly in terms of the way that we were talking about data. There are quite a lot of data elements that are just not encompassed in KBART and we wanted to record. And a lot of the stuff you, you, you can see here is um, the, the data elements of recording. We had to start dreaming up new terminology, new uh, data elements. But this is all from kind of an analyzing the kind of information that is desired either in KB Plus or in uh, Qualio Lay, or from uh, other sources. Now what I want to do is um, just talk about um, the way that we can um, we get data into the system. Um, so one of the thing, one of the key things that about this data, this data-driven system is getting the journal data in, and it comes in all shapes and sizes. So we needed a tool that would make it easy to edit files with hundreds or thousands of journal titles in, that it was usable by non-programmers, by subject experts, by librarians, um, but that was able to support complex transformations of data, and also to make it easy to repeat the same operations again and again. If you get a data file from Wiley, and you spend uh, 10 hours kind of getting into shape to import it to a system like this. You don't want to spend another 10 hours when you get an update the next month. So what we wanted is, is a way of recording the, the, the changes that we made and being able to reapply those. And what we um, decided to use was a product called OpenRefine. It was previously called Google Refine and came out of uh, a project called Freebase, which is uh, another kind of uh, data-driven uh, project which was eventually bought by Google. And so Google Refine was a way of getting data in there. 
And when we, we assessed this against some other rule-based systems, kind of business rule-driven systems, and decided this was both the most scalable and probably the best kind of compromise between that power and usability. And it also had a, uh, an existing defined uh, mechanism for extending um, the product, so we can build in a, a plugins or extensions to the product. And we've built a, an extension that supports a shared workspace, so all files can be checked into a shared workspace, so there's a community can see what's being worked on at a specific time, you can see the last person who worked on it, when it was last touched, check out um, to work on it and check it back in when they finish so we can share work across the community. Um, we built in rules that enforce some aspects of data integrity, so certain uh, fields can only contain certain values, certain things need to already exist in the database, you can't just force in, load in a new organization that has to exist before you can uh, add, it, uh, add uh, relationships to it, so you can't say Duke University Press publisher title until Duke University Press exists as a publisher in the system. And it also made, we've been able to make it uh, common operations easy to apply. That, uh, there's a web address up there that um, is a wiki where we started to document um, some of the things we're doing with uh, OpenReply. Um, and these slides will be available online afterwards. Uh, I'll just go through this in slides. I was going to demonstrate it, but um, we're reaching the end of the time and I, I don't want to, to spend the time on it. But um, you can see here, this is a shared workspace, list of projects that are checked in or checked out at the time. You can see here, this is a view of when I'm working on a file in Refine. On the left-hand side, I've got errors and warnings that tell me things that I need to correct about the file before I'll be able to load it. And those are live. They update as I do things. If you look at the, the, the those of you who can see, um, one of the war error messages there is, for instance, that um, there are incorrectly formatted ISSNs in the ISSN column. So that kind of thing we can um, we can pick out and um, we can offer quick uh, resolutions to. We can also um, support lookups against the GoKB database here. So you can look up organizations or platforms to um, so that what you're loading matches stuff that's already in the database and you can't load it until that you've done that. So any organizations you're mentioning have to exist in the database first, same with platforms, so we can keep that authority control. And so just an example, you then get to search for the um, for the title for the platform in this case and, and then uh, you can load it. And also we support these kind of what we call quick resolutions. For in this case, uh, the import doesn't specify a publication title column. Um, so you can rename a column or you can add a column in that situation. So usually there is usually in the, the sheet you get from the publisher a list of titles, but obviously the name of that column will vary. In KBART it would be publication underscore title, but it could just be titles or titles in a specific package or you know it can just vary incredibly. So um, renaming columns is a is a common thing and that will prompt you which column you want to rename and, and do that for you in kind of a, a couple of clicks. Um, once you've once you've got it into shape, it won't let you get to this stage until you've got it. You've passed all those kind of you've got rid of all those error messages. Um, you can either do an incremental update to an existing package, um, so that will essentially update any existing tips that are listed with new information, or you can do a complete replacement. If you've decided you've got a much better file than you had previously, you just want to wipe the old one away, then you can do a replacement. That's going to be a much more unusual kind of scenario. I think once we start get going on this then the stuff will want to build on what's there, not kind of wipe it out every time. And that's important so that we can keep externally the view of, for instance, the contents of the package will be consistent. We don't want to be changing internal identifiers for packages and titles, et cetera, all the time. And then once you've done the, that ingest, that takes us back to the, the kind of uh, the web interface. Once you've ingested the information from Refine, you start to see these these warning messages or re requests for review within the um, within the uh, web interface. So here we have one. The publisher supplied in a in a new file is different to what the one already on the on the title. So that suggests that either there's been some mix up with the publisher name, or indeed you're actually adding new information. If you load, for instance, a file from JSTOR or Project Muse, you will almost certainly be adding to the, public, the publisher history for titles, because they list a huge numbers of publishers that the title has had throughout its history. 
And so that would be an expected outcome, and you'd want to just uh, you wouldn't necessarily want to do anything about that. But if suddenly you know you see a new publisher on something from Wiley Blackwell, you might be thinking, well, hey, is that affected? Which package is it in? You know, what's the transfer happening there when it's happening? So you might want to go back and check that. So finally, the next steps. Um, We've got continued software development. We've got three or four releases of the software uh, to, to come in the next um, kind of eight months, so by next summer, um, including, as Mike pointed out in his slide, the integration with both the Qualio Lay systems, the integration pieces there, and with the KB Plus systems. Um, we're, we've got a recruitment open for a GoKB editor, someone to kind of oversee the processes and the data. That would be a, a, a position based at NCSU. Uh, that's uh, I think open at the moment. It's, uh, we're, uh, and uh, so anybody interested, uh, international applications are welcome. Um, uh, if you're familiar with the journal kind of world, uh, it would be an interesting project. Um, and uh, community engagement is key for this. We need, if we're going to be successful in building this global open knowledge base, we need buy-in across all of the communities involved. And so looking at editorial workflows, how that's going to work with the broader community, not just people who are kind of bought in like me, but, but you guys, people across the, the, the globe. And we already have discussions with groups in other countries, in Japan, in Germany, in Sweden, in France, uh, around these projects. There, there is global interest in getting this right, but we need to find ways of ensuring that we can harness that, uh, all of that you know, work that is already happening in all of your institutions. And get and and bring it into this single kind of place where we can uh, work on it together. Um, the same is true with the supply chain, and also looking at other projects. We're working at the moment with the um, NISO project uh, on OnyxPL encoding of licenses, so we can uh, include OnyxPL encoded licenses in GoKB. We're already doing that in KB Plus, but we'll, we'll be doing it in GoKB as well. And by the Charleston uh, conference, uh, which is not far away now, we should have some stuff to show on that um, uh, by, by that conference. And clearly, we have a big job getting data into the system. The, the work that's already been done by the GIST collections team on KB Plus is giving us a head start there, because we can take all of the data they've already done and load it. But a lot of that is UK specific, and it doesn't touch on, uh, and is, is a limited number of collections at the moment. We clearly need to start harnessing um, uh, get it, getting data in from uh, collections, a broader range of collections, and getting more data in, more descriptive data about titles, more descriptive data about collections. And that's me, and that's mine. Thank you very much. Who's actually... Uh Sorry? Who's actually hosting the actual system? The KB? system is currently, the live system is hosted on um, Quali hardware, um, which is actually an Amazon instance, but it, it's being run by the, the team at the Quali Foundation. Um, and with the test instance, it's hosted by Knowledge Integration in the UK. And then how many libraries? are actually using it, and I assume they just log in remotely and do their work. So at the moment, we're um, working only with a limited number of, uh, of sites who um, and, and limited number of staff at those sites, and um, it's about five, five institutions. And they, they uh, for the work on Refine, you have to install and Refine on your, uh, on your desktop. And for the, the web interface, it's just a matter of logging in through the web interface. Um, but um, we're in, in terms of that, I, th I think it's fair to say we're in early days. We were essentially done now the first release, I would say I was confident that um, the data going in uh, can be uh, done to a high enough quality that it's not going to be bad data. So I think the data going in now will be good data um, and, and you can't kind of muck it up by doing, you know, um, but um, we clearly have some, uh, the next stages are, are really broadening out the people who can access the system uh, and um, first of all to, to a, a larger number but a, of limited partners and then to a broader community as a whole. But, but to get that right, we have to clearly have some discussion and engagement about what are the workflows we want to support, what kind of permissions, you know, if you know, Joe Blogg suddenly says, well, no, this title has changed, how do we trust that? How do you divide up work across a community like that? And, I hope that that's something the GoKB editor 
will take uh, a firm kind of grasp on and, and look at what those workflows need to be and what the kind of organizational process needs to be. Uh, just in case there are any questions from anywhere else, I'll take them. Okay. Do you have any idea uh, what kind of coverage you have in terms of KB Plus versus what's actually being used or in terms of the UK? Or you mean just for that matter? The, the coverage of packages that are in KB Plus versus packages that are out there altogether? Yes. Uh, well, I, I can't give you figures, but it, it's going to be a small, a very small proportion. So, the, I mean, the work. Um, that JISC has done there uh, has focused on major suppliers. So we have all the Elsevier collections, all the Wiley collections, all you know, all, all the all the Springer. So the kind of big names we have, but we will have focused on the UK deals. So uh, although, for instance, we have the Elsevier subject collections in, the primary focus was on getting the Freedom collection as taken by UK institutions. Um, but um, uh, and um, what probably the major area where I think we're falling short for UK institutions at the moment in KB Plus is that mm, we don't have any of the big aggregated packages in, and that clearly is the um, it, it makes up a, a huge amount of the journal titles that are taken in, in uh, institutions, and is is a big demand, but obviously a much more challenging one because they change more rapidly. They're not just journal content. You know, all of these issues uh, make those more difficult. Um, we're clearly interested in the work that's already been done at Simon Fraser on some of that, uh, and would like to, to build on that rather than start over from scratch. But I think that the question of, I think we don't yet know how up to date does that stuff have to be? You know, because that stuff can change, you know, on a daily basis, right? So, uh, do people really want to know that? Uh, clearly, they want to know. You know, if Harvard Business. Uh, review moves from one aggregate out of an aggregator. You want to know about it because you know. But if it, you know, if it's uh, just you know a report on the economic conditions in I don't know London or whatever it is, which is a single report, you, you're not you're probably not that interested. It's just a mass of content, and you're happy that it's there. So trying to get down to exactly what people want from tracking that and at what level of detail is is something we need to work out. I, I would really like to see us get at least one of those aggregated packages in because I think it, it would show that we can tackle something that, of that scale. But it may be there's something that's better done in GoKB rather than KB Plus because those are global problems, not UK specific. Thank you. Any further questions except where's the dream? <laughs> <laughs> Where's the drink, Andrew? Outside. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you all very much. Thank you. What went wrong with that search? Just the display.